Hello and welcome everyone to today's expert webinar brought to you by Get Abstract. My name is Ramona Maccionetti. I am your host. Thank you very much for joining. I'm already seeing your messages coming in. As always, a big delight. So while people are coming in, I'd like to welcome my conversation partner, Michael Bangistania. And not much time has gone by since we had last the pleasure of talking to our audience in this constellation. That's right. Hi, Michael. It's so nice to be back again, Ramona. That last conversation around how to work with almost anyone was really great. Um, and I think this is going to be another amazing crowd coming from all over the world. Um, and I think we're going to dig into a perfect topic to start the year, which is what's what's your worthy goal? What's the impact you want to have in this world? I mean, we've all done resolutions, but now is the time to really get focused around how to make this an amazing year. So everybody Thanks, who's here, welcome. It's great to have you here. Exactly. And here's a fun fact for the audience, just to show you how dedicated Michael actually is. He's joining us from Australia. That means it's in the middle of the night for him. So oh, thank am. you, Michael, again, for doing this with us. I'm thrilled. Well, look, I'm, I'm really good at helping you think about goals. I'm terrible about helping you think about scheduling. <laughs> ah. we, we set this up months and months ago, and then I got a surprise trip to come to Australia, where I'm originally from. So yeah, it, it is a little early for me. So. <laughs> What? But this I'm sure, my, I'm I sure mean, you'll do great no matter what. I'm, I, I could even just take, go and do this whole thing from bed, but no, I'm going to just stay here and have a great conversation yeah. with you. Please, please stay where you are. So <laughs> for those of you who are joining newly, let me quickly introduce you to Michael. He's an author, teacher, podcaster, and the founder of the training and development company Box of Crayons. And he is best known for his book, The Coaching Habit, which is the best-selling coaching book of the century. And also for How to Begin, which is the book we are going to talk about today. Yeah. So before I kickstart our discussion, Michael, two important notes. I'd like to encourage everyone joining us today to use the chat function or yeah. basically better use the Q&A. So below the chat, you see it in your right uh, panel on the right side of your screen. There is the, the Q&A. Put your questions for Michael in there, please, and we will address as many as possible as we go. And of course, the recording of that session will be provided to you in the follow-up email in the next few days. Okay. Michael, let me start out with a little anecdote. So we have entered the year 2024, and a new year often comes with new motivation, like a new drive. While individual challenges, the ones that we are facing, often remain pretty much the same. So, But we are super motivated again to tackle them, to change our outlook for a while at least. And then, you know, like the usual thing comes exactly. back. So here's an example. Back in 2023, I was talking to a friend of mine, and I do have the permission actually to talk about that incident. So that guy is a knowledge worker, very clever guy. And he was a bit of in a mood back then. So he <laughs> said he had no unique talent. Like he was acknowledging that he has talent, but yeah. he said he had no unique talent. And he said that nothing that he did made a real difference. And then he concluded that he didn't have the right kind of ambition. So that's what he said. Mm. And next year, he said he wanted to focus on one big thing and make that even bigger. So, Michael, what, what is it with ambition? What's the role? <laughs> what role does it play in the big scheme of setting goals and achieving goals? Yeah. You know, ambition is a tricky word. Um, in some contexts, people are like, I don't want ambition because I've met ambitious people and they're kind of grasping and they're climbing over people and they're like they're they're too focused and monomaniacal you know like i don't want that type of ambition but i want people to be ambitious for themselves and for the world i want them to be ambitious to have to be the best version of themselves to keep growing keep learning keep expanding I want them to be ambitious for the work they do so it kind of lights them up so they've got some thrilling sense of the work I do actually matters. And I want them to be ambitious for the world. I want them to go, how do I make this world a better place? It needs all the help we can give it. And here's why I think that's really important. Here's, here's my quick story. When I first started writing How to Begin, I thought I was writing a slightly different book. Anyway, I did what authors do, and I wrote away, and I, I wrote a kind of first draft of it. I had like about 100 pages, and I sent it out to a friend of mine, Misha. And I said, Misha, I just love your initial reaction. Tell me what you think. 
And he wrote back after about three or four days and he went, this is terrible. I mean, I've been reading 60 pages. I have no idea what your book is about. This is like, this is, I mean, first drafts are meant to be crappy, but this is the worst first draft I've ever read. I was like, I was a bit disheartened. So I went through the manuscript and I went, is there anything that's salvageable here? What can I say? And um, there was one line that I thought was really powerful. And the question, and the line was, we unlock our greatness by working on the hard things. So I think ambition is important because it helps you find your hard things, the things that are thrilling and important and daunting for you. So that not only do you make an impact in the world, but you unlock the next best version of who you are. Mm -hmm. Directing that ambition proves kind of difficult without a clear idea of how mm -hmm. to start. So, Michael, how does one begin? Well, the idea from the How to Begin book is to say, I need to find my worthy goal. That's the language I use. And it's called a worthy goal because I want you to find something that is worthy of your time and your effort and your resources and your talent and your life. So how do you find a worthy goal? And the three components of a worthy goal is it needs to be thrilling, important, and daunting. Thrilling means it needs to be something that lights you up, gets you excited, makes you rub your hands and go, yeah, that actually sounds pretty juicy. <laughs> I'd quite like to do that. And thrilling is a really helpful component because it helps you make sure you're not choosing a goal that just feels obligatory or that you should be doing this because you know a person of your type at this time of life should be doing that mm -hmm. the second element is important so important is how do i give more to the world than i take how do i make it contribute and that's an important element because it means that your goal isn't just entirely self-centered so you've got thrilling and important that kind of dance with each other and then the third element is daunting It means that you're not choosing a goal that is already easy for you. It's a goal that takes you out to the edge of your own sense of confidence and competence and who I am. It's the daunting is that the hard things that unlock your greatness. So thrilling, important and daunting, all in the service of trying to figure out what your worthy goal might be. Okay, so that would be the factors how you consider the factors that you consider when determining the worthiness yeah. of a goal correct exactly okay going back to the question yeah. how do you begin now you have considered those three factors how exactly. do you actually start the process well i think um when you're trying to work out what to do you know most of us have this inkling it could be like your friend who's like i just feel restless um Some people actually have something like, I've, I've been wanting to do this all my life and now's the time to start going and, and start doing it. But there's, there, there needs to be a moment where you're like, oh, something, something needs to change. Something needs to be different. So if you're in that place, and I think everybody who signed up here probably is, that's why you're here. I think the start place to start is to start writing down a crappy first draft of what your worthy goal might be. It's, to, it's you take your very first guess, your best guess at what you think a worthy goal might be. Now, that's a bit scary because, you know, you're kind of safe when you've just got some half ideas floating around your head. When you write down something, it is that kind of one of those small, powerful steps of commitment. And the good news is it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, it's, I'm, I'm 100% sure it won't be perfect. It's a crappy first draft. But it's about being brave enough to say, well, take your best guess. Now, it might be something to do with work. You know, it could be something about the team you're on. It could be something about the business unit that you're in. It could be about your organization and what you're thinking about in terms of like strategy or culture. It could be about how your organization is interacting with the world. Or it could be very personal. It could be about, you know, your family, your role in your family. Or it could be about your neighborhood, just your kind of, how do I make a, what's my worthy goal to serve my local neighborhood? Or it could be about your community. You know, if you're like me and you write books, you've got people, you know, on my mailing list and all the like, and so I think about my community. Or you could be going, I'm trying to fix my country or I'm trying to fix the world. 
So your worthy goal can be different scales, but it's going to have a focus around this is where I want to make a difference. This is where I'm seeking for something that's thrilling and important and daunting. So this is actually a very personal perception. It's yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Okay, because here some, someone is saying many people I talk to, including myself, are having t a tough time to identify uh, what we are good at, that motivates, what motivates us to be excellent. Most people are seeing themselves average at many things, but not standing out in the one thing. And I think that's the same problem well, that my friend had when I talked to him last yeah. year. So it's worth teasing apart the difference between talents and am I good at it and, you know, am I expert and where you're choosing to turn your attention and your beam of light and your kind of your your contribution um the, i mean i would if somebody's coming to me going i'm not good at anything i would say you have a combination of different skills and you have your personality and you have the way that you show up that entirely makes you a unique unique person in the world so the question now is for who you are right now for the talents you have right now, for the person who you want to be right now, who the person you want to become, what's the worthy goal for you? Where would you make a choice around that? And whatever you, wherever you're at, now you're like, okay, where do I want to go? Is it work? Is it neighborhood? Is it big? Is it intimate? What's the type of worthy goal that I might do? And then you take your best guess. One of the things that often happens, I think, Ramona, is people get paralyzed by going, I don't immediately know <laughs> what my worthy goal might be, so I won't do anything. And it means that in a year's time, at the end of 2024, not much has changed. You're kind of still who you are. You're still doing the things you've always done. Taking your first guess, that first step of commitment is when things start to, to shape and change. And remember, and you write it down, it's just your crappy first draft. I'm, I'm going to give you some tactics and techniques to actually refine your worthy goal and get closer to what you think the thing might be. I mean, Ramona, let, if I may, when you hear this idea of a worthy goal and this idea of a crappy first draft, do you have one for you? Do you have something that comes to mind for you where you're like, I think this might be something for me for 2024? Yes, sure. See, I I have I have always been very fascinated with with uh, languages and also with cultures and with words for that matter. And I'm like today I dedicate myself to spreading the word, so to like making knowledge from people like you accessible to everybody, so people would be would be able to you know tackle their challenges to succeed in in what they are doing. And I like I it took some sideways on the way to that goal, but I, I realized very early on, this is what I want to work with. Yeah. So also for myself and the creator good, like things that you said in the beginning. And um, so I ended up here at Get Abstract. <laughs> it's a perfect fit, right? It's a really strong fit for this idea of bringing knowledge to the world. And you're with an organization that does exactly that. So I think that's a wonderful start. And I don't think we're there yet. I think there's more to do. That feels quite, high level to me, quite abstract, ironically, or perfectly. <laughs> um, and that's great. But part of what I want to do is go be curious about how we would make that even more personal for you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you once you've written your first draft, in fact, for the people who, is, who are here, I am going to encourage everybody if you want it, only if you want it, but I'd be thrilled if you did this. Take a guess, write down what you think a worthy goal might be for you. It might be a sentence. It might be a couple of sentences like Ramona. It might be high level. It might be just some words that's kind of getting you in the right place. But take this moment to actually write down what your crappy first draft of a worthy goal for you might be. Could be Michael, that, uh, excuse me. It could be something that's going to take, like, you think three months to do or six months to do or a year to do. It's kind of going to have a project feel to it, you know, a beginning, a middle, and an end to it. But take you out. If you want to, you could share it in the chat or you could just keep it personal for you right now. And, if, and Ramona, what, I, what I'm going to do, I think, is if it's okay with you, give people the three tests that they can apply to their crappy first draft and you too, so we can kind of take it to the next level. Does, does that feel like helpful? Let's go. 
Let's go. Perfect. All right. So the first test you want to apply to your crappy first draft is your the spouse-ish test. The spouse-ish test. And it's called the spouse-ish test because if you're lucky, you've got a person in your life who really knows you, who really loves you, who really gets you, who really understands the nuance of who you are, um, who is not afraid to tell you the hard truth if they need if you need to hear it. And for some of us, it's a spouse. Like in my case, actually, it is a spouse. I've been married to Marcel and my wife for 31 years. <laughs> I know, it's amazing. Um, but not everybody has a spouse and not everybody's spouse is that person for them. So I want you to bring to mind the person for you, the individual for you who might be like good at giving you feedback. And I want you to imagine you saying, this is my worthy goal. This is the thing I think I'm going to be uh, giving my attention to. And you're going to get one of three reactions from them. They're either going to go, amazing, exactly, perfect, that's fantastic, I love it. Um, you know, you've got that kind of super enthusiastic, oh, I, I can't believe you haven't come up with this before. This is perfect for you. Um, or you might get, that is a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. What are you thinking about? You're nuts. It's a, you should definitely not do that. Well, I don't even know how you came up with that. Or you might get um, uh, a kind of a yes with an asterisk, which is, well, yes, but honestly, you've been talking about this for three years now. Could you stop talking about it? And could you just get on with it, please? Could you actually make it happen? Am I going out of focus or is it just I'm getting too enthusiastic? My camera's freaking out. There we go. Um, and it doesn't matter what the reaction is. It's not the truth. It's just feedback from somebody who knows you well. Like one of my worthy goals years ago was writing the book, The Coaching Habit. It turned out to be a really important book for me. It sold a million copies. It made me slightly famous to some people. When I told my wife um, I was going to write this book, she said, absolutely not. That is a terrible, terrible idea. <laughs> you have so many other things to do. You're, you're, you're late on emails to me. You know, you don't have time for this. This is, this is a stupid idea. And I was like, I'm definitely going to write this book now. <laughs> it kind of gave me, you gave me focus around that. So there's a spouse's test. So one of the tests you can bring to your worthy draft is to kind of go, well, okay, so what would that person, what feedback would they give me? And what does that tell me about how much they care about this? The second, and it, this is good for testing the thrilling aspect in, in particular. The, the second element is a uh, test is called the FOSO test. And FOSO stands for, for the sake of what are you doing this? For the sake of what? And it's really about making you make a connection to the bigger game you want to play, the bigger impact you want to have. The reason why it makes the world a little bit better, why you give more to the world than you take. Um, you know, you can be doing things that are very personal for you. Like, I want to be a better dad. You know, I want to learn this language. I want to show up. I want to make my neighborhood um, and start a start a thing in my neighborhood. Um, it can be really kind of intimate, but it's like for the sake of what? Why does that bring good into the world? So that's the second test. Can you see a way of connecting to that? And then the the third test is the Goldilocks test. Um, you know, uh, we all know the story of Goldilocks showing up with bears, beds, porridge, breaking and entering, all of that stuff. Um, but in astro astro astrology, astronomy, um, there's this idea of the Goldilocks zone for planets. Goldilocks zone for planets are planets that are not too far away from the sun and not too close to the sun. They're in the right place where water is liquid. The Earth is in the Goldilocks zone in our solar system. And astronomers get very excited for looking for exoplanets, other planets going around other stars. They get really excited when they find a planet in a Goldilocks zone because water is life. So part of what you're doing when you're thinking about uh, this, and this is for the daunting side, is you're trying to find a worthy goal that's not too big and not too small, not too abstract, not too tiny. You know, I want to, I want to bring knowledge to the world is a little too big as a goal. I want to floss 
every night is a little too small for a goal. So you're trying to find a goal somewhere in the middle of that, trying to find the right weight, the right heft in that goal. So as you're thinking about writing a second draft, You've first of all got these three tests for you to poke at it. And you're like, oh, it's it's strong for the spouse-ish, but it's, I've got to get the weight a bit better. And then the second thing I want you to do when you think about a second draft is to start it with a verb. Start it with a doing word. Because this project is all about the doing of it. And sometimes when you write a project, it makes it feel like you've already done it. And so when you start it with a verb, it's like, here's the stuff that needs to happen. So that's a little bit of teaching around how to write the second draft of a worthy goal. I'm hoping people are playing with it. Maybe some of them are actually sharing their second draft and how it's evolving in the chat. Because there's a lot of good chat going on. I can see that. Yeah. But Ramona, I'm, and I'm t totally putting you on the spot here, but how does your worthy goal change when you go through those different tests and you start it with a verb? You see... That makes me realize I haven't, I, it's not figured out very well. It's what you said before. It's a bit abstract. It's a bit big. Yeah. That's what I realize um, very quickly. I, I was thinking about the, the person that you mentioned, the one person which could give me feedback, could influence me. I have a person in mind which could help me very well doing that. Right. It's actually somebody I met in my studies when I was in the U.S. Um, he's an academic. He was a teacher. Perfect. So I do have people who could give me feedback. I kind of can anticipate the feedback different people would be giving me. That's also what somebody wrote in the chat. What do you do if people are opposed to what you're suggesting? Yeah, you go, that's fascinating. I love that. It's like, oh, that's fascinating. But it's not the truth. It's just somebody's feedback. You know, mm -hmm. they might give you some, they might go, yes, you should definitely do it. And you might think to yourself, huh, they were a little bit too enthusiastic about that. Maybe this isn't the right goal for me. Or they might go, no, that's a terrible idea. And you're like, with me and my wife, I'm like, yeah, that's really that's really confirming for me. So it's a way of triangulating, kind of sounding out your worthy mm -hmm. goal from somebody who's got some good instincts, but then they're not going to give you the truth. They're just giving you their opinion. Mm -hmm, exactly. Michael, why you have been elaborating, so many people shared uh, their story in the chat and I want to say thank you thank, thank you for everybody for, for being so open it's fantastic isn't it what I read a lot here is that people would want to develop skills I can relate to that like I have yeah. a long list of skills that I would want to develop to bring to my job also like to my to my personal life so I mean can you take a guess at how you'd reframe the second draft? I mean, this is making putting you on the spot, and I know this is a, this is a tender, vulnerable thing, so nobody's holding you to anything, but um, mm. if you had to guess, where, where might you go? Yeah, this is indeed, indeed hard. Um, I don't feel put on the spot, don't worry, but it is indeed hard. Um, I would want to ponder a bit about that, to be honest. Okay. I wouldn't know what to answer right away. That's great. And that's a perfect thing to do. Um, I'm going to give people the third test. We won't go into it in any depth. But if you want to make a third draft of your goal, because, you know, you're here, everybody who's here loves reading. <laughs> you know, it's the essence of Get Abstract. It's like, how do we get knowledge, great knowledge out into the world? How do you know better so you can do better? Just as the sign says over Ramona's uh, right shoulder there. Um, and I can tell you that as a as a writer, everything gets better and tighter and more focused and more powerful when you do drafts. Somebody once said, writing is editing. And what you're doing here is you're editing. You're making this thing feel compelling for you. Because because this is going to be daunting. This is going to be a worthy goal that's really important and daunting. So it's, you're going to be you're going to find something that's a little bit scary for you. <laughs> you're a little bit like ah, this is going to take me to the edge of who I am right now. So you need the best expression of your worthy goal, so that in those moments of doubt and tiredness, when you just want to lie on the ground and have a nap, it's going to kind of pull you forward. It gives you both external and internal motivation. So here's how I do a third drop. I'll just we won't do it. I'll just teach you the, the, the basics of it. You look at your worthy goal, the second draft that you've got so far, 
and you give it three scores out of seven. What score out of seven would you give for how thrilling it is? What score out of seven would you give for how important it is? And what score out of seven would you give for how um, daunting it is? Now, the rule is you can give a maximum of two sevens. So you're going to give it scores and then add up your scores. And the highest score you can get is 20 out of 21. My rule of thumb, it's called the voting test, is that you want your score to be 18 or more to have a worthy goal that feels about right in its drafting. The power of doing that test, just rating it, how, what would I give it out of thrilling, important, and daunting out of seven, is it gives you clues as to where you might refine and tinker and amp up your, your, the next draft of the worthy goal to make it the strongest worthy goal that you can. So if you're up for it, a third draft, you can go away and do that after the webinar, after the conversation with Ramona here, just to tighten this up and make it even stronger, even more powerful for you. Everybody's got some homework. <laughs> exactly. You didn't come here just to hear me talk. You came here because you want, it's like, you don't want to just, this is what, this is what I love about Get Abstract. You're like, you're not just here to know better. You're here to do better. And with all of my books, I'm like, how do I help you change your behavior? How do I help you step into doing something that you haven't done before? That's why we have such a long, strong partnership with Get Abstract. And um, what I'm hoping is lots of you are going, man, I'm going to go and do some work around this. I mean, it's late January. We're past the worst January day. The worst January day is January the 21st, because that's when you realize that your New Year's resolutions are still not going to work and you get your credit card bill for December. So you, you've had the darkest day of January. Now you're like, okay, how do I make 2024 a year where I unlock my greatness by working on the hard things? Um, a quick side question. I also saw that somewhere in the chat, like questions are coming in so frequently, but there was one saying, does, it, does that also work for less quantifiable goals? Somebody said, um, they wanted to be more sportive, I think. Somebody wanted to be more creative. Does it, that, that process of yeah. like the drafts, does it work the same way? I think so. I mean, what you're doing is you're just tinkering with it so, until you get to a place where it feels really powerful and compelling for you. For me to be more creative um, is like really in an interesting direction. And it feels like it, you know, the, the Goldilocks test would be helpful because being more creative feels like a little high level. I'm like, tell me the thing you're going to be working on to be more creative. Are you going to learn a, a musical instrument? Are you going to read more? Are you going to write a book? Are you going to paint? Are you going to frolic naked through the streets doing interpretive dance? I don't know what it is for you, but it's like picking a... I think a worthy goal often has a sort of a bit of a project feel for it. Um, sometimes they're short projects. Like some of my worthy goals are write the next best book I can. I'll tell you my worthy goal uh, now, and it's it's a really big one. It's like to sell 10 million copies of my books over the next 10 years. So I've got a worthy goal that is a 10-year thing, and it is like seven out of seven for thrilling, seven out of seven for important i know that sounds a bit egotistical but i'm like i've got some good ideas in my books i want to try and make the world better through my ideas and it's it's 11 out of seven for daunting because i have no idea how to sell 10 million copies of my books i mean it's just <laughs> like that feels impossible to me um but it's like it is really motivating and it means that i'm like okay so i've got a 10-year plan Writing a book is a year and a half plan for me. So time timeline can, can vary, but you need to have a kind of project feel to it. Okay, you just answered one question off the chat. What's a reasonable timeline for worthy goal? So there actually is none. Could be anything. I think, yeah. Well, I think it's probably more than four months. Like most things like a worthy goal, it, it takes a few cycles of, of, of work to be done. Um, you know, at, at um, at uh, howtobegin.com, we have a community called The Conspiracy, and the conspirators are all working on their worthy goals. And the structure, and I'm just saying that because I'll tell you the structure we use in The Conspiracy to do our work. We work in chapters. And what we do is we decide what we're working on, 
and where our focus is going to be for six weeks. Because six weeks, you can get a lot of interesting stuff done in six weeks if you give it focus. But if you kind of waste that time or you've done the wrong thing, it's not a terrible cost. It's only six weeks. And then we take a week or two off to kind of get our lives back together and tidy up the bedroom and vacuum and kind of do all the other stuff. And then we do another six week burst. So we do um, six chapters per year. Um, at 36 weeks working the rest of the weeks off and kind of calibrating and stuff and i think it's normally at least three cycles for a worthy goal so that's six months um so i think normally a worthy goal will be a, like a six month project minimum but then it can be six months or a year or two years or 10 years mm -hmm. all right all right so michael when somebody went through the steps that you described the people did their drafts the people did the tests and then yeah. they defined the worthy goal it's a big one it's a hard one as you said some people find it really challenging to actually initiate the project then so often yes. they feel like overwhelmed by the enormity of the task that yeah. they have just defined for themselves they may be hindered by procrastination a lack of confidence like a perceived time constraint maybe yeah how do you guide those people who are seeking well, to overcome those obstacles and take really actionable next steps i've got two big things to wrestle with here one i'm going to get to in a second which is sort of the practical things around taking the next steps and kind of getting going on that because you know david allen many years ago wrote one of the first and definitive books on productivity i'm sure it's a, it's a get abstract summary it's called getting things done and he says, if you can't do a project, you can only do the next step. Um, so it's really helpful to get into those details. And I'll share that in a minute. But there's a big thing in the middle, which people often skip. And in some ways, this is the most powerful self growth moment for you, which is like, you have a hard look in the mirror. And you go, am I committed to this or not? And this is how you do it. But in this moment, having taken your best guess at a worthy goal and drafted it, you've got two choices, to do it or to not do it. That's it. <laughs> do it or not do it. And it's really worth pausing and lingering in this moment and weighing up the consequences of both. And I always say that every choice you make has prizes and punishments. One of my favorite frameworks in this world. Every choice you make is prizes and punishments. So it's really worth pausing for a moment and weighing up the prizes and punishments of both the choices so you can decide what choice you actually want to make. So there are prizes and punishments for you having done this work and deciding I'm not going to do the worthy goal. The prizes are. Well, everything stays the same. You don't disrupt anything. You don't disrupt yourself. You don't confuse your friends. You don't have to say no to things so you can say yes to your worthy goal. Everything stays calm and comfortable and familiar. Nobody gets upset. You don't step out to the edge of uncertainty. You don't have to summon your courage. There's something really comfortable and familiar about the prize of saying no to your worthy goal. But there's punishments, which is like the same. <laughs> you get to stay, you don't get to change. You don't get to evolve. You don't get to grow. You don't get to contribute. You don't get to unlock your greatness by working on the hard things. So that's prizes and punishments for, for not doing it. Prizes and punishments for, for doing it. Well, the prize is to do the thing that you'll find thrilling and important and daunting that will make the difference that will change things that will unlock your greatness mm -hmm. but the punishment is that there's risk involved it may not work it may not go the way it probably won't go exactly the way that you're planning um you're going to change which means you have to say no to some some version of who you are right now so that you can say yes to some version, some future version of you, the next best version of you. And when you're saying no to present you and yes to future you, you're also saying no to some of the people and the obligations and expectations in your life. Mm. So this isn't 
this isn't an inconsequential thing. This is a this is a I'm trying to change my life a little bit thing. So it's not it's not I need a shopping list and I need to go and buy some groceries. It's I'm trying to take on something that makes me different. Mm-hmm. So this is the big thing. This is the, before you get into the next steps. Before you get into how much time do I have for this? So like, are you up for this? And if you decide you're not up for it, and that's okay. What it tells you is you may need to go back and try and find another worthy goal. If you are up for it, well, then you're into going, okay, so how do I get cracking on this? How do I begin? How do I get started? Mm -hmm. Does that actually mean that you can only have one worthy goal at a time? Well, I've experimented with this because I suffer from the SOS, which is the shiny object syndrome. So I'm always like perpetually overcommitted and i've had times where i'm like i've got three worthy goals going at the same time and what i did with that is i did one well and i did one in a half-assed not very well way and one i totally ignored so i reckon you might be able to get away with two but i reckon the magic actually comes when you pick the one um picking the one also is like the i'm i'm, I'm committed to this i'm actually going to really take a crack at it so My default suggestion would be pick one worthy goal. That is going to be more than enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have one question here and I cannot not read it out. It's interesting. (laughs) How (laughs) um, have you used AI to help you develop your goals? Oh, I haven't because I wrote how to begin before chat GPT suddenly became um, a thing, but you should a hundred percent try that out, which is mm-hmm. like, I don't even know what the prompts would be. Um, if you come up with good prompts for how to begin using chat GPT or whatever else, send them to me. Cause I'd love to see them. I'd love to see how you use that to edit and grow, mm-hmm. but you know, defining your worthy goal is a, is a process of drafting and drafting and drafting till you get closer to it. Part of what chat GPT does brilliantly is it writes crappy drafts for you. It's unlikely get, it probably won't write the perfect draft for you, but it could get you really far. You know, it's like, I hate chat GPT. I want, what's a project I could do that would use these talents that would contribute to the world in this way. And that would stretch me and grow me and mm-hmm. like come up with 15 ideas. I bet you they'd come up with five ideas that are utterly nuts and ridiculous. And three, that could be quite interesting for you. So that is a really smart idea. God, I wish I thought of that. That's really good. See how excited I am about it. I was also thinking, outstanding question. Thank you for the one yeah. who turned it in. Um, what did I want to ask you? I wanted to ask, so so if you, now you defined that one goal, you, dedic- you, you committed yourself to that goal, but eventually you, you might get stuck, you know, you might face some yeah. challenge. You what strategies yeah. you will yeah. face some challenge because you're okay. picking something that you've not done before you're mm-hmm. picking something that is uh, an invitation for future you to show up not the comfort of present you showing up so i've got yeah. three things yeah. to think about when you cross the threshold this is kind of the start of your hero's journey or your heroine's journey if you like that this idea of well you know what, what i love about the hero's journey model is it's like the hero, the first steps are the hero hears the call and she resists. She says, yeah, this isn't for me. But then she hears the call again and she's like, I'm not sure. And then she hears the call and she's like, I've got to, I've, I have to go. So you're, you're pulled across the threshold. And the three things you want to take in mind are, first of all, this. Travel in small steps. Unfortunately, this isn't, once you, once you figure out your worthy goal, this isn't as simple as like plugging your address into Google Google Maps and it'll say, we'll take a left and then take a right and take another left and it'll take you 39 minutes and here's where the coffee shop is. You're, 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 you're navigating territory that's not familiar for you. It's like you can see a distant mountain on the horizon and there's a jungle in front of you with mist and you're like, do I go down that valley or do I go down that valley? So that's why that the six week cycle that we use in the conspiracy is so powerful because it means that you're, we're navigating to the tree over there and then we retake our bearings and then we, we, we go again and we reset. So define the small things. 
decide how much capacity you have in your six week stretch or however you're doing that. Um, some, some, some periods of time you have more capacity, some periods of time you have less capacity. Um, but it's like, what's the work you can do now and then get cracking on that. The second thing I think is really important is don't travel alone. Man, this is hard. This is big. This is important. And if you're traveling alone, it's lonely and it's a bit scary and it's all too easy to give up. Mm -hmm. So I think about how do you find the band? <laughs> how do you get the band back together again? And in the book, um, how to begin, I talk about not not the not the types of people you need, but the energies that you need. And I draw on uh, traditional, I think North American indigenous wisdom. You know, when uh, uh, in in some parts in indigenous uh, communities, they they call in the four directions when they start something important, start start a gathering, start a ritual, um, and it's a way of kind of bringing all the energies that you need in the right space, so you have all that you need. You're fully resourced. And the four energies, which I think are really helpful, the first is the warrior energy. Are you fierce? Are you brave? Are you pushing forward? Are you drawing a line in the sand? Some of us need some of that, that kind of fire. The second energy is the, the healing energy, or sometimes called the lover energy. So it's a place of support and encouragement and softness and security. Some of us need that. Some of us need that kind of like, I just need, a, I need, I need some gentleness there. The third energy is the, the teacher energy or the wizard energy, sometimes it's called. Um, this is like the people who can lead you and guide you and mentor you and support you and teach you the stuff that you know you don't know and also teach you the stuff that you don't know that you don't know. And then the fourth and final energy is the, is the visionary or the ruler energy. And that's all about... Are you being ambitious? Are you being strategic? Are you seeing the big picture? Are you being ruthless? And it's kind of some of that energy. So as you think about the people you want to have around you, think about the energies. Some of that energy you'll have yourself, but sometimes for your things you're like, who do I need to have on my side so that I'm I'm not traveling alone? You know, that's honestly the the reason we started the conspiracy is like it brings together people to support each other. So that people aren't lonely in doing this work. And I guess, I guess there must always be someone, right? Because somebody's here writing, some people do not have a partner to travel with. Yeah. But I guess there's always someone who could support there are, you. There are, there, you. You can find people. It doesn't, like, it can be people, I mean, you can hire people. <laughs> you know, you can hire a coach. You can, um, when I started, um, For 15 years, I had a I had a mastermind group, and it was me and four friends, and these are people I didn't even know. One of one of them, Molly, just reached out to me and said, "Do you want to be part of this?" I'm like, "I don't know who you are, but okay, I'll give it a go." And I was really resistant to it because I'm like, I don't even like joining things like mastermind groups. You know, I don't like people enough to do that. But we turned out to be a really nice group of people we were all a bit kind of suspicious about a mastermind group but we all turned out to love each other and you know you set up your mastermind group to work best for you but we checked in kind of probably three or four times a week just on hey this is what i'm up to this week on on kind of a, a, bo a web board we talked once every two weeks for 90 minutes where we kind of coach each other and support each other and then once a year for three days we'd meet and we would hang out together partly for fun partly to go deeper into the work and we did that for 15 years and it didn't cost us anything we just found people and we called people in so um you know there are people out there who are like yeah me too These may not be your best friends in fact probably not but go find some people where you're like do you want to do this thing with me maybe we could support each other and help each other Mm -hmm. To the audience, if you feel addressed here, how about you get in touch with Michael or with Cadabstract, with myself, and we start thinking about how we could accompany you. That's maybe, right. that's, maybe that's a start. Michael, I have one final question. I have to pay attention to our really time. 
I'm sorry. If um, I, talk, I feel like I've talked too much, and I've only touched on some of the stuff that we've done here. So apologies if I've been a bit too. It's it's the it's the quarter to three in the morning hyped up energy. <laughs> Not at all. Like you answered a lot of questions that I couldn't ask. So oh, perfect, just perfect. And also like, like I'm monitoring the chat and people have pretty similar questions actually. And also what is awesome, our, our audience is helping themselves out. Like um, some people that... answer other people's questions. I love that. I love Thank that. you. Hey, I, I didn't, I didn't say um, the yeah, third advice. The final question I wanted yourself. to ask you. Oh, sorry. Perfect. So oh, yeah. it is this, it is to know how to get back to the best version of yourself because when you're doing something that's thrilling important and daunting there's going to be these moments where you're like you feel you struggle you feel a bit diminished you feel a bit lost you feel a bit confused and um you then can get into a bit of a negative spiral which is like i and what you don't want is to give up so there's a uh, there's all sorts of ways that you can do this, but the idea is going, how do you nurture yourself and how do you find your way back to the best version of who you are? So this is a bit of kind of self-development work to go, all right, at my best, I'm this person. In the book, there's this exercise called this, not that. You actually build out five or six or seven pairs of words to say, at my best, I'm this, not that. I'm this, not that. So for mm -hmm. me, it's things like, at my best, I am provocative, not sycophantic. I am stepping forward, not stepping back. I'm being bold, not being timid. I am focused on, I'm not sure what that one is actually, so I'll skip that one. Um, I will, I, I won't, I will hold it lightly rather than care too much. And over the years, I've just built up these words where I'm like, okay, all the column on the left hand side is me at my best so if i feel myself slipping how do i find myself back to some of those attributes on the left like a, a real a, this is a real in the moment thing with the with the 10 million books um it's such a big goal i feel pretty timid about reaching out and asking for some invitations into some big podcast that um i'm hoping with and so literally in my journal yesterday morning i'm like Stop being timid, start being bold. <laughs> you know, I was like writing, writing every morning I kind of check in and I'm like, what, what are my questions? Um, and so I, I actually, I, I'll tell you the three questions I ask myself every morning because it's a way of me kind of staying connected to my worthy goal. Um, and I spend a minute on this, maybe two, on, on days when I'm feeling long. Number one is, uh, what, am, what am I, what do I notice? So what's going on? How am I feeling? What am I seeing? Second is what do I want? Which is a way of connecting to my worthy goal. And thirdly is what's the one thing today that would move this forward? Ramona, you put the slide up. It's like the equivalent of the Oscars playing the music saying, stop talking and let us wrap this up. So Ramona, over to you. Thank you for having me, by the way. You, you know, I hate to do that, right? I could be, I could talk for hours and I know the audience will love it too. Michael, thank you so much. It was really a pleasure having you here today. Thanks also to the audience. Thank you for watching, for commenting, as I said, for, for helping out. I really appreciate it. Yeah, there, there are many summaries of uh, from Michael in our library. There's how to begin and there are quite a few others. So check it out in the library. Also, there's more relevant content on the topic. Michael mentioned another summary before. And there are channels like goal setting, life advice. So I'm sure you find a lot of valuable insights there. I mentioned in the beginning, there will be a follow-up email with the recording of the session in the next few days. And if you have questions, I really mean it. Don't hesitate to contact us. Contact us at corporate at getabstract.com. Get in touch with Michael. It's michael at mbs.works. Yeah, and howtobegin.com is a good website for people to go check out if they'd like more information about the book and extra sort of bonus resources as well. Exactly. Thank you so much, Michael. Thanks, everybody. Have a very good rest of your day. Stay tuned for further events brought to you by Get Abstract. And yeah, good luck and a lot of success for everybody. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Ramona, a wonderful host. See you next Thank time. You. Bye, bye bye. Have a good time in Australia. Bye. Thank you.